I recently made a video about the most powerful bat suits in animation. A uh, link to this video is in this video's description. Now, this video is instead going to focus on the five most powerful bat suits that are in comics. Not films or TV series, but just comics. Number five, the Kingdom Come bat suit. The Kingdom Come comic was a miniseries set in an Elseworld story alternate reality in the year 2020 which at the time of publication, which was 1996, seemed like a far off future date. Now the plot of this story is a little bit involved, but the broader strokes that the new generation of superheroes aren't quite of the same moral calibre of the old, and are quite egotistical and fight themselves as much as they fight the supervillains. And Superman doesn't like this and tries to change the hero's attitudes, which eventually leads to lines being drawn and different factions emerging, with Superman having his own Justice League and his own prison for criminals that he deems need to be there, and Batman having his team called the Outsiders. These factions eventually butt heads and some pretty big fights break out involving others as well, before eventually peace is made between them all. Now there is a bit more to it than that, but that's pretty much the basic plot. And the Kingdom Come Batsuit is designed for two things. One is to help an aging Bruce Wayne move around like a younger man. And the other is to have kick-ass defences and attacks. The suit has super armour, gives Bruce Wayne super strength, grappling hooks, and can shield Batman from flames. It also has sharp blades and has laser blasters built into it, kind of like a futuristic version of the Batwing armour. This Batsuit is so strong that it not only makes Batman a threat, even when he's a crippled old man, but it also allows him to fight superpowered individuals with relative ease. So it's undoubtedly one of his most powerful Batsuits. Number 4. The Batman Beyond Batsuit Now this suit is a fan favourite and pretty hard to beat as Batsuits go. The main problem is that this suit is made of advanced tech from the future, which means it's pretty much outclassing most Batsuits automatically much as the Kingdom Come Bat suits from the future, and so it's pretty powerful. Now the Batman Beyond has the usual armour and super strength of the other suits, but it also has invisibility, infrared vision, electrical suit discharges, the belt buckle is a buzzsaw, and it also has scanning capabilities that can be used for many different things, such as dipping his finger into a glass of water and finding out there's a sedative in it, which is a pretty cool advanced scanner. Now, the original Batsuit began in the animated TV series, and then was turned into a comic. And that comic wasn't really that great to begin with, but thankfully it did get better as it went on. And in the new versions, it actually has got pretty compelling. And though the first generation of the suit was pretty awesome in itself, Batman actually designed a new version of the Batman Beyond suit that was discovered on file in the Batcave. Now, at this point, Bruce Wayne is thought to be dead and the people who work in the Batcave are the new Batman, Terry McGuinness, his younger brother, Matt, and his close friend, Max, who's a bit of a super genius and really good at hacking computers. And when the Batsuit is destroyed in the field, even though she's very clever, she has no idea how to fix it. But luckily, Max and Matt discover a second Batsuit prototype that Bruce Wayne had already made. They find a file on the Bat computer and then find the suit in the Bat cave and are able to get it to Terry, who's in the field without the suit, trying to rescue his old girlfriend, Dana. Now, they eventually get the suit to him. It obviously has all of the features of the old Batman Beyond suit, plus a few new ones. The wings are bulletproof shields and much lighter than the old ones, so they can now be used as weapons. And the Bat suit has a sort of super sonar feature that effectively lets Batman see sound which means he can see through walls and fully take in his surroundings, much like the detective mode in the Arkham game series. The suit also has pulse blasters, and the flight capabilities of the previous suit are blown out of the water, as this one can now fly into space. Though not for long, as there is only so much oxygen that the suit can store. And like I said, it has all the other features of the previous Batman Beyond suit, meaning it enhances the wearer's strength by around 10, it's armoured, has built-in batarangs that launch from the hands and wrist, has infrared vision and night vision, small grenades in the belt, it's waterproof and has underwater breathing apparatus, and all the other standard goodies that come in Batman's utility belt. It's so much better than the original Batsuit that it makes you wonder why Bruce Wayne never got it out before. The answer to that is because of the built-in AI system that was designed to make failure impossible. The AI stops the wearer from feeling pain and pushes them to extremes. Now obviously this is designed so that if a person is in a small amount of pain, they can continue on regardless. However, it goes much further than this, and it also pushes the wearer into committing murder. It even goes so far as to take over control of the suit if it deems it necessary, and this is a major problem with the Batsuit. Bruce Wayne once wore it on a mission and faced off against the Banes, 
Four equally baned up supervillains, and even being one bane back in the day was hard enough, as we all know he'd even broken Batman's back on occasion, and kind of does in this fight as well. You see, Bruce Wayne fights way beyond what he should, breaking a few ribs, which isn't that bad on Batman's standards, and he can't feel it because of the suit. The problem is, he also ends up breaking two of his vertebrae, at which point he really should have stopped fighting and got out of there. But because of the suit, he doesn't even notice or care, as the suit props him up and stops his pain senses from working. And though he is able to beat the Banes, it damn near kills him, and it takes all of his effort just to get the suit off. And Bruce Wayne decides then and there that it's just too dangerous to use. Now as I said, Terry McGuinness and the others thought Bruce Wayne was dead and didn't know these warnings, and so of course they used it when they found it. However, when they do get hold of Bruce Wayne, he tries to stop Terry from wearing it. However, Terry is already in the field when he gives his warning, and he's taking it to fight the League of Assassins and has no time to go back to the Batcave, take it off and wait for a new suit to be built, as he believes that millions of people are about to be killed. So he goes off and fights the new head of the League of Assassins, who is, of course, Batman's son, Damian Wayne. Now, the suit nearly kills him as he fights Damian Wayne, because Damian Wayne is pretty much the most skilled person who's ever lived at this point. Although Terry does manage to get the upper hand at one point, and the suit almost kills Damien, and it takes a tremendous amount of effort for Terry to stop it from killing him, and even more effort to get the damn thing off of him. And when they get back to the Batcave, Bruce Wayne destroys the suit and builds Terry a new one that looks much like the Batman Beyond suit we're used to seeing. And though this other suit is very dangerous to wear, it's still one hell of a powerful Batsuit. And perhaps the best part of this suit is that it also just looks amazing. Number 3. The Inside of Batsuit When Batman returned from the dead, even though technically speaking he wasn't actually dead, he was just travelling through time coming back to the present, it's a bit of a long story so just go with it, but everyone thought that he was dead. And when he comes back, he spied on the Bat family for a while to assess their capabilities and Gotham City's safety. And the way this suit works is kind of different, but at the same time kind of the same as the Amazo android, which also mimics the powers of the Justice League. The suit is of course super tough and makes Batman super strong, but it also has heat vision like Superman, green willpower blasts like Green Lantern's power ring, it can turn invisible for short periods of time like Martian Manhunter, and has night vision and sound and light dampening tech for extra stealth. It has an acceleration mode which mimics the powers of the speed force, to a limited extent allowing for superhuman speeds of movement. The suit can also fly through manipulation of gravity and magnetic forces, and it's able to teleport in a 3 meter radius, and it can also teleport another person on this radius as well. All of which makes it a very powerful bat suit in terms of abilities, but the powers can only be used a few at a time, and require extensive recharge periods before they can be reused. And these recharge periods can be up to 24 hours long, so in terms of raw power, it is beat by two other bat suits. Number 2 the Hell Bat Suit. Now this suit was designed by Batman and then built and improved upon by the Justice League members. Superman forged the armor in the heart of the sun, Aquaman forged it using the density of the depths of the ocean, Green Lantern infused it with his willpower, the Flash infused it with speed force power, Cyborg created its circuitry, Wonder Woman took it to the god Hephaestus' forge to put the final touches on it, and Lex Luthor, who was at this point a member of the Justice League, improved the armor's software with his own code. This suit is incredibly powerful. It allows Batman to have super strength, and the armor protects him from punches that are as strong as Superman's. It fires lasers, has a flight mode, and the suit can even come apart as a horde of bats that are controlled by Batman's mind and these can attack any target he wants, much like a vampire turning into a flock of bats. This soon was only seen in one story arc, as Batman goes to Apocalypse to bring his son, Damian Wayne, back to life. And though the suit is eventually destroyed, it does allow Batman to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darkseid, who is debatably the most powerful supervillain in the DC Universe. And when he invaded Earth, it took the combined power of the Justice League to send him back home, which just shows how powerful this suit is. The only real downside is that the suit draws its power in part from Batman's metabolism, meaning if Batman uses it too much it can drain him dry and even kill him, which it very nearly does when he ignores the safety warnings from the suit and keeps on using it even though it is seriously harming his body. But still, this bat suit is just awesome. It looks fantastic and it's incredibly powerful. Number 1. The Justice Buster 
This suit made its first appearance in Batman issue 35 and is in the graphic novel The Joker Endgame, which is a collection of all the issues of this story arc if you want to read the full story. Now, the Justice Buster is sometimes referred to as the Fenrir suit, but Fenrir is actually the code name for the plan to take down the Justice League, which involves activating the suit and releasing a non-lethal low-level gas attack on Gotham City so that it's evacuated. So basically, he's getting rid of potential collateral damage that could happen from the fight between him and the Justice League. The suit itself is actually called the Justice Buster. Fenrir is of course the name of the wolf in Norse mythology, who is the son of Loki and is supposed to fight the gods at Ragnarok, or start Ragnarok by eating the sun, depending on which version of the mythology you're reading. But in any case, he's supposed to fight the Azir gods, meaning Odin, Thor and all the other Asgardians. And the plan is of course called Fenrir because it's a metaphor for Batman fighting the Justice League, who are pretty much gods themselves. So, just as the Hellbat suit was designed for Batman to fight super powerful supervillains who might want to attack Earth, this suit was designed for him to be able to take down the Justice League should they ever turn to the dark side. And so, thanks to the Joker infecting the Justice League with a new mind control Joker toxin, Batman is forced to fight the Justice League, meaning Wonder Woman, The Flash, Aquaman, and Superman. And this suit, amazingly, is able to beat them all though the suit did cost more to build than 60% of the world's countries spend on their yearly war budgets, as Bruce Wayne says during this comic. Now, the suit is designed to have different defences and attacks to take down each member of the Justice League. Wonder Woman is the first to attack him, and the first to go down. You see, Batman has a magical artefact called the Bind of Veils that was made by the Greek god Hephaestus. There is a Greek myth about Odysseus, where a group of mortals sneak past a cyclops by hiding in the wool of his sheep as he lets them into his home. And this artifact was made from the hair of one of those sheep. Hephaestus made it soon after he made Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth, using an inverted version of the lasso's weave, to make it manifest lies instead of truth. And when it's used, it tricks a person into believing a delusion. And in this case, it tricks Wonder Woman into thinking that she has won and taken Batman down and killed him when in fact she was beat and is just hallucinating. And it seems that Hephaestus may have made this specifically to take her down, or at least to take down whoever has the lasso of truth. To fight Aquaman, the suit has a magnesium carbonate formula that he squirts him with. It's the most absorbent material in the world. It has so many pores that a single gram has 800 meters of surface area. And essentially, the more Aquaman moves, the more it dries out his body. And being an Atlantean, he can't live without water. So as he's struggling, he's basically drying himself out and making him weaker and weaker until he passes into unconsciousness. Now, the Flash is taken down in a similar way, as he too is squirted with a substance. It's a frictionless substance that means he can't get any traction, and so he can't move, no matter how fast he runs. You may wonder how comes the Flash didn't just dodge this when Batman squirted it. The reason is that this suit's computer moves fast enough to predict where the Flash will be, and then to aim it there. So he's not actually aiming at the Flash, he's aiming at where the Flash will be because he knows in advance. And so long as the Flash is moving slower than the speed of light, he can be hit by this suit. And as for taking down Superman, the knuckles of this suit are actually infused with tiny red suns from dying universes. And red sun radiation takes away Superman's powers, so the red sun punches hurt him like hell. And Batman was able to get hold of these red suns courtesy of the Atom, Ray Palmer. The suit also has plasma shields designed to deflect Superman's heat vision, and it has thrust and thermals to counteract Superman's freeze breath. So to counteract this, Superman drops a building on him. The Joker Toxin has the whole league wanting to kill him, and they're genuinely trying to take him down. So he knocks this building on him, which is something Batman doesn't expect because it's so out of character. And though the suit's actually relatively fine after being hit with the building, eventually Superman is able to rip the suit to pieces. Which isn't that surprising, after all, this is an Unleashed Superman we're talking about. But luckily, Batman keeps a pellet of kryptonite gum in the Batsuit's helmet, and he puts this in his mouth and chews it like gum, and then spits it into Superman's eye, and the kryptonite does the rest, taking him down. Yes, he does take him down with kryptonite, which is kind of the writer's easy mode, as they can't think of anything better to take him down, but to be fair, this is Superman. He's way overpowered and practically a god, so there are very few ways to take him down. And yes, I would like another way to take him down as well, but at the end of the day, Kryptonite is his weakness, so it does make the most sense, as it's the most efficient way to take him out. Now, we don't actually see him fight Cyborg and Green Lantern, but the suit has defences for that as well. 
For Cyborg, there's an electromagnetic nerve tree to take him down. This is basically a fancy EMP that shuts down Cyborg's cybernetics and also shuts down his nerve clusters on his organic flesh, meaning he's unable to move for a short period of time. And as for Green Lantern, the suit has a citrine neuralizer. Now this isn't greatly explained as to what it is or does, but it is based in part on a Yellow Lantern's ring light, and it comes across as a weapon that impairs willpower and decision making, both of which are needed to use a Green Lantern's ring. So effectively, Green Lantern couldn't use the ring in the fight if Batman used this defense. But again, it's unfortunately not made clear if this is a blaster or a field generated to stop willpower. Although if it is a field generated around the suit, that does explain why Green Lantern never came to attack him. Now, you may think that even with all this fancy tech, Batman still manages to take down the Justice League pretty easily. And the writer, Scott Snyder, has said before that this is because the Joker toxin controlling them has weakened them slightly as well. And that's why you can take them down so easy, as they're not at full strength. It's kind of a cop-out really, but it is quite an interesting issue to read. And though I'm not a huge fan of the overall Joker Endgame story, these few issues that feature this suit and the fight between Batman and the Justice League are pretty awesome, and I do recommend reading those. Now, as I said, the Hellbat suit held its own against Darkseid, but was outmatched in terms of power, and Darkseid was, in turn, beaten by the Justice League. And since this suit can beat the Justice League, that means that this is Batman's most powerful bat suit, period because it can take down all the Justice League who can take down Darkseid, who is probably, as I say, the most powerful supervillain in the universe. Probably. And all of this basically means that the Justice Buster is the most powerful bat suit that we have ever seen in the comics. Now, obviously this is going to change in the future, because as time goes on, they're going to build better and better bat suits. Otherwise, why would we be interested in them? So if you're watching this far enough in the future and they have made a stronger bat suit, feel free to let us know in the comments. But what do you think? Do you agree with this list, or do you think there are other, more powerful bat suits that should have been included instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.